So this month, I wanted to test out an idea that I've been thinking about for a while. Recording an entire song with just a sure SM58. It's an instantly recognizable $99 microphone that's been around since 1966. Every venue, studio, musician, and vocalist has either used one or owns one. It's probably the first thing that comes to mind when you think of a microphone. One of the reasons I wanted to challenge myself to produce a song with such limited parameters is because when I was starting out, I often got too hung up on gear. I was reading and getting advice from all the wrong people in all the wrong places. I believed that I needed an enormous mic cabinet, different types of preamps, and outboard gear just to make something worth listening to. Experience has taught me otherwise. So last month, I started writing a song on an acoustic guitar that a friend had left behind, and I decided to finish this piece with my SM58 challenge. After finalizing the song's melody, form, and lyrics, the most important part of a song, and where you should spend most of your time and energy, I started thinking about a simple arrangement that would work within the parameters of my challenge. Throughout this recording, I only used a basic Focusrite Scarlet solo. It's a USB interface with a single preamp and DI input. No outboard preamps, compression, EQ, or what have you. I recorded the Ibanez acoustic guitar pickup into my Behringer delay and compression pedals and mic'd up my Fender Blues Junior with the SM58. This, along with a metronome and a scratch vocal, was the basis for my song. From here, I worked out the simplest drum pattern that I could competently play on my small Sonor Safari kit. I'm not a great drummer, but I can play along with a click track. I placed the mic in the center of the kit, a few inches away from my right knee. There's a lot of names for this technique, but I learned it from a sound on sound video with Moses Schneider. He calls it the versed mic position. In the context of my recording, it required lots of compression, EQ, and some delay to fit nicely into the arrangement. After laying down the drum track, a percussion element was missing. I settled on an egg shaker. I wish I had more shaker options here, but some overdrive and EQ helped it fit into the mix. From here, I started working out and recording the bass line, but I really struggled coming up with something simple and elegant that outlined the root and chord motion. Something was missing. After some frustration, I landed on the fact that my guitar line had some ambiguous harmonic motion, and I really needed something simple to support it. So I grabbed my cheap Kramer Beretta guitar and laid down some power chords to outline this root motion. This again was recorded with my Fender Blues Junior and some delay inside of Logic. After this, the bass line came together beautifully. This was a nice reminder that sometimes I need to step back and be mindful of my tunnel vision. I can really laser focus on things for hours and not realize that it's the elements around them that are the issue. The bass was recorded directly into the interface's DI. I intended to reamp the signal and record it with the 58, but after recording and filming, I realized that my Focusrite interface didn't have enough outputs to go that route. The vocals were probably done take two or take three all the way through without any overdubs. This particular interface doesn't have great direct monitoring options, so I had to pop one ear off. Usually this part takes the longest, but this song was full of surprises. Of course, it needed EQ, compression, along with some edits of the plosives, but that's pretty normal for this microphone. The most difficult part of this songwriting and production process was actually the solo. My first thought was to try an acoustic solo, but nothing I attempted seemed to stand out enough. After this, I tried for what seemed like an eternity to make a Volca keys fit into the arrangement. I came up with a great solo that used the LFO and some guitar pedals, but no matter what I tried, the part kept coming out a quarter step flat. The stylophone seemed to have the same issue. After struggling for two days to find the right sound and going through a myriad of keyboards and synths, I ended up taking a break. When I get frustrated, I have to walk away for a bit and clear my head and focus on something else. And as it turns out, this is exactly what I needed. After a day off, I figured I could grab my micro cord, set the arpeggiator to the song's tempo, feed it into my pedals and amp, and just like magic, that was it. I'm really happy with how it turned out.
This whole process was about challenging myself and some of the preconceived notions I've had for years about recording. It forced me to commit to my decisions and be creative within strict parameters. This is not an easy way to make a record. And it's definitely not something I would recommend for everybody. But I hope it serves as some motivation that having limited means shouldn't hold you back from making music that you're proud of. The recording works because I spent most of my time and energy making sure the song's melody form, lyrics, and arrangement were strong enough to stand on their own. Don't make excuses, make music. <laughs>